Hey guys, this is Comic You Know, and today I'm doing a review for Arrow Season 3, Episode 2. So let's talk about this episode, Sarah. Uh, so this episode is pretty much the grieving of Sarah herself. If you guys didn't watch the last episode, you know, spoiler alert, uh, Sarah does die. And uh, this episode is to try to find a killer, which they don't really find, but like I said, it's mostly a grieving episode than anything. It's not really a, a story arc driven episode. And also in the back of Oliver's head saying, where the hell's Thea? Where's Thea? Where's Thea? And by the end of the episode, we see exactly where Thea is, which I'm very excited for next episode uh, to see that fleshed out even more. Um, but yeah, with this episode, there's a lot of things to enjoy character-wise. And I gotta say, what I enjoyed most here uh, was Laurel. Honestly, who knew you would ever say that? But yeah, Laurel was my favorite thing about this episode. It just shows how much this character has grown and where she's kind of going um, as a character. Uh, her holding that stuffed animal shark that every single time Sarah needed to be comforted she would hold that shark so I love that scene and also holding that leather jacket because her words uh, at Sarah's burial was I need it to be you know for a reason no one would know who she is so how do people know who Sarah is even though she's dead is that Laurel becomes Black Canary she honors her sister's name and lets people know who she exactly was so I thought that was a, well, obviously where we're gonna go with this and I you know with Laurel I think she's a character that a lot of people were annoyed with uh, in season two and you know there's times that I got really annoyed with her and I'm glad that Sarah's death didn't revert her back to who she was uh, she says, you know what, I gotta get out of this bar because, um, you know, this is not a great place for me to be. It wasn't her reverting back to that. And I loved how angry she did get about her, her sister's death. And I liked the motives she had while she was trying to figure out who did kill Sarah. And her willing to kill, it's, it's just, it's really great to see her turn more into this Black Canary character, which I think by the end of the season we will see. And she's going to go to Wildcat soon. All these things are building up for her to become Black Canary. Let's hope we get the Canary Cry some sometime this season or, you know, ever. That'd be pretty cool also, but maybe with the Flash um, crossover, who knows. Uh, I thought, you know, the whole Thea thing, let's talk about that, because obviously that's something on my mind, because Thea is uh, one of my favorite characters, probably is my favorite character because of... Uh, who she relates to in the comics, but I, I kind of hated the anticipation of waiting for Thea for the, the last couple of moments. Uh, I understand because they want a full the uh, Thea episode uh, next episode, so it seems like the flashbacks are going to be fully Thea, which I'm cool with because we haven't seen Thea in two episodes, so we're going to have to have a Thea-centric episode next week, but I don't want to wait a week. I can't wait a week. Uh, but yeah, I, I love that last scene. You just see how much Thea has trained. She's become pretty badass, just that one last moment, and you're going to see her become more badass and how she's transitioned to this character, her calling Malcolm Merlin dad. You just see that this girl's been brainwashed. So uh, this is a story I'm so looking forward to, and will Oliver tell her the truth? And that's one thing I want to say about the grieving of Oliver, was kind of his denial uh, in a way, because every single time he wanted to grieve, he says, I need to call Thea. I need to call Thea because he's kind of seeing himself in Laurel. He sees that, how if I died, how would Thea feel? Would she turn into what Laurel's doing right now? Uh, you know, she wouldn't know the truth. So I love that moment that every single time he grieved, he thought about his sister, his family. Uh, so obviously there's a connection there, and I thought that was a great way to do it, because obviously Oliver's not going to cry. After five years of being on the island and losing so many people like Shadow and all these uh, people, he's not going to cry like Felicity did. Uh, he, he's going to grieve in a different way. So he's obviously still going to grieve because he was very close to Sarah, but that was the way he grieved, was saying, where is Thea? Um, and I think it could have got a little annoying if he didn't make that connection, but that was definitely the connection. Uh, and that that's what made that last scene so, so great. Um, also, one of my favorite parts was Diggle naming his kid after Sarah. You know, that even though Sarah is not in the show anymore, she technically will be in the show, in a way, um, honoring her with, you know, Diggle's baby, I thought was a, a great 
a great scene and a, a great moment. So overall, I really did like the episode. I think, you know, Komodo was, eh, it was okay. I think they just kind of wanted to mention a name because of Lemire's run on uh, Green Arrow. It wasn't so much about Komodo from the, L the Lemire's run. They just kind of used the name and referenced it. So I was a little disappointed with that. But like I said, this wasn't really a story episode. It was more of a character episode than anything. And I was okay with this because there's some shows where they grieve for like five seconds, like a Team Wolf is a good example where they didn't really grieve for Allison because they did a time jump. With this they did it directly when Sarah died. Uh, brings it into the Arrow Cave and seeing how each character relates to that. You know, Felicity being good friends with Sarah. Um, Felicity questioning her life. Can I stay in this cave all this time? And you know, Oliver doing the same thing. He said, I don't want to die like this. Uh, he, he wants to be Oliver Queen in a way. His question of, should I be Oliver Queen? What's his connection to Oliver Queen? Is Thea. So that's why he keeps doing that, to kind of connect to his humanity. So really great scenes for some characters here, and so looking forward to next episode. Really anticipating that. So hope you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Uno. Guys, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for Comic Uno and their end situations. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Uh, also, in the description below, there's links from my comic book, like Father Light Daughter. Don't forget to like the Facebook page, like Father Light Daughter. Also, don't forget to back up the Kickstarter for like Father Light Daughter, which is annotated. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.